Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green creature combo deck that's using some of the new cards from Shadows over Innistrad Remastered, and Young Wolf plays a key role in this deck, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one with Undying, meaning if it dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters on it, we get to return it to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, so 1-1 one -one turns into a 2-2. Two -two. And if we happen to have two copies of Young Wolf, we can potentially draw a ton of cards with Yogmoth, Thran, Physician, a 4 mana 2 4 with protection from humans, can pay a life, sacrifice another creature to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on up to one target creature and draw a card. So let's say we have Yogmoth in play with two fresh Young Wolves, then we can sacrifice one of them to maybe put a minus one counter on an opposing creature. If the opponent doesn't have any creatures out, it doesn't matter, we can still decline to put a minus one counter somewhere since it's optional. So then now we get to draw a card at the cost of one life. We have a 2-2 two -two Young Wolf with a plus one counter and a 1-1 one -one Young Wolf. So then the next step is to target our 2-2 two -two Young Wolf with the minus one counter from Yogmoth, sacrificing the 1-1, one -one. and because plus one counters and minus one counters will cancel each other out, we'll be once again left with a 1-1 one -one and a 2-2 two -two Young Wolf, and we can rinse and repeat, draw as many cards as we have life, and then eventually we can find an Innkeeper to offset the life loss, as now we gain one life whenever another creature enters, or maybe find a Blood Artist to start draining the opponent as we sacrifice our Young Wolf and close out the game that way as well. Then another great combo with Yogmoth is Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons, 2 mana, 2-2 two -two legendary human cleric. Says whenever Hapatra deals combat damage to a player, we can put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Doesn't happen very often, but instead, whenever we put one or more minus one counters on a creature, create a 1-1 one -one green snake creature token with death touch. So now we can potentially make a 1-1 one -one snake whenever we go through the process with Yogmoth and Young Wolf. And if the opponent has a lot of creatures in play, we can simply keep targeting the opponent's creatures with Yogmoth putting minus one counters on them, getting snakes in the process, which we can then sacrifice to Yogmoth and then if we have an Innkeeper or Blood Artist in play, we get to gain a ton of life in the process as well. And then to round things out, we've got 8 1 mana Elves to speed things up so we can get the Yawgmoth in play ahead of schedule. We've got a little bit of spot removal with 4 copies of Fatal Push to complement the minus 1 counters from Yawgmoth and Hapatra. And then we've got a bunch of tutor effects, 4 copies of Assemble the Team, the only alchemy card here. Get to search the top third of our library, round it up for a card and put it into our hand so that can often find the missing combo piece. We also have one copy of Diabolic Intent, can sack a creature as an additional cost to search your library for any card and put it into our hand. And then four copies of Eldritch Evolution, which is very similar to Diabolic Intent, as an additional cost to cast it, sacrifice a creature, and then search your library for a creature with mana value X or less, where X is 2 plus the sacrificed creature's mana value, and put it straight onto the battlefield. So sometimes we just want to sacrifice a young wolf to get a second one, then we'll have a 1-1 one -one and a 2-2, two -two, and then we can combo off with the Yawgmoth. Sometimes we want to sacrifice a 2-drop like Innkeeper to get the Yawgmoth in the first place, or sometimes we just want to sack a random elf to get Hapatra or one of our 2-mana life gain enablers. And then our mana base has a lot of black-green dual lands because we want to be able to play a turn 1 elf, but still have double black for Yawgmoth, so we don't have too much green mana without black. So that's why all the black-green dual lands are so important, especially something like a Blooming Marsh, which we can play untapped on turn 1, or an Overgrown Tomb. And then we've got a few channel lands, Poseju and the Abandoned Mire can also come in handy, especially since we have a few legendary creatures to discount them. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems reasonable. Just missing Yogmoth. If we're up against a creature deck especially, opponent on the red-green, so... Turn one elf, turn two... Maybe Innkeeper plus another elf. The snakes are also going to be good against large green creatures. Opponent had the lightning strike. So... Probably fine to play Hapatra, although there's not a very high chance of me actually getting to attack with it into a 5-5. So then I'm probably better off just going with an Innkeeper. Next turn Elves plus Assemble, gain some life back. And look for Yogmoth. Could have also gone for Elves and a Tapland. Hmm. 
And there's the beast. Could see a great hench next turn. Okay, top decked Yogmoth, that's nice. Can play Lenor Elves Hapatra. And then next turn Yogmoth to start comboing. And then we'll have a backup Hapatra in case they kill it, so that's not too bad. Okay, the blade reforged to get in there. Finds a strangle. Well, hopefully they can't cast it here. Opponent had the red mana, sadly. Hapatra down. So I can still play Yogmoth and another Hapatra. And that keeps us going. Can sack Elf for starters. Then we'll get the snake tokens. So we can decimate the opponent's board. And draw a ton of cards. Our life total stays consistent. So our opponent will need removal for one of our key pieces here. And we've picked up a lot of Redundant cards in the meantime. Can keep going until we sculpt the perfect hand. Young Wolf, a nice addition. Although at this point, a Blood Artist is all we really need, or a way to find it. Alright. Finish off the beast and then pass it back. Get in for one as well. And then discard Overgrown Tomb, Forest and one Assemble. Seems good. And then we should be able to piece together a win next turn. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. And uh, yeah, we've got a Keeper, a couple of Elves, and Innkeeper to make mana, assemble to find a Yogmoth perhaps. Opponent could be on some sort of Thopter tribal deck. Turn one Springleaf Drum. Our first couple lands will be all Blooming Marsh. Okay, it's a meta attack to seek no land cards. Just gonna play a bunch of elves. And then next turn we can assemble, still play Yogmoth. And then we just need to find some more sacrifice fodder. Hapatra would be ideal. Bones got another Ginger Brute. And we'll see if they keep up maybe a Metallic Rebuke. So, don't have to worry about Metallic Rebuke, at least. And another Assemble. So make sure we tap an Elf. Found our Yogmoth. Play Yogmoth. And then I might as well wait to activate it. But we can do so at instant speed. Two Brutes are attacking. Okay, happy to use Yogmoth here. Sack an elf, keep the innkeeper. 
The Seiju could also come in handy. And then I should still have enough for Assemble, play Hapatra, which will decimate their board. Sentinel's fine. Okay, so opponent could have a Metallic Rebuke in hand still, although if we kill the Sentinel, then they don't have enough artifacts left to cast it. So I guess step one, tap Elves for mana, activate Yawgmoth, kill Sentinel. All right, that seemed to work pretty swiftly. So assemble... Did find Hapatra. We'll have to sack Innkeeper to get it started, but that's probably fine. So let's start shrinking down some of the opponent's creatures. And our opponent has seen enough, can just kill all their creatures, draw a bunch of cards, and then eventually we'll be able to take over with Blood Artist or with Innkeeper just gaining a ton of life and eventually attacking them with our snakes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Opponent's got Gigantha's Companion. We've got a Keeper. Two of our tutor effects, Mystic for early acceleration and a Young Wolf. So we'll be looking for Yogmoth, and then, depending on the matchup, another Young Wolf, perhaps. Opponent with Blue-Red Wizards, but no early Wizard. And then we can Assemble, play Young Wolf. See what we find off Assemble first. Did find Yogmoth. This could be the pick. At 4 Toughness, Yogmoth is more likely to survive a burn spell. And our opponent's gonna haste the Symmetry Sage here to get in for 6. Our life total is certainly gonna be under pressure, so we won't be able to freely activate Yogmoth. Mystic down. Okay, did find another wolf. So now, if I play Young Wolf, next turn play Yogmoth. We can draw all the cards we want, so of course that's still going to cost us some life. Could also Eldritch Evolution for Innkeeper, and then play Young Wolf, and then our life total will stay constant. And then uh, I'll still be able to Yogmoth next turn. So attack for one. And then I guess I will need to take two of Overgrown Tomb, although I might find an untapped Black Source next turn that doesn't cost life. Get Innkeeper, and with a treasure, play Young Wolf. And then with the Yogmoth next turn, we can start going off. So hopefully they tap out without killing anything. Strangle could take care of our Innkeeper. All right, it's too bad. At least we're only taking three. And we did find an untapped black source. So I can play Yogmoth now. Attack. And then... Start drawing. Could wait to make sure we don't get burnt out here. Could also shrink down Symmetry Sage. Although that's going to cost me my Young Wolves. I guess for now I should just pass a turn, since we can do everything at instant speed. And if they try and kill Yogmoth using two burn spells, we'll be able to draw a lot of cards in response. Alright, Wizard's Lightning goes upstairs. And 
and take three points got one card left could also sack young wolf shrink down symmetry sage have a two two young wolf left over and then if we find another creature we can still keep going sure and then boseju answers den of the bugbear so that's not a concern Bannon Meyer can get back Innkeeper, and then we should be golden. Alright. Opponent puts Gigantha in hand, we get to untap. So can attack all out. Abandon Meyer back Innkeeper. Patra is also fun, but we prefer the life gain. Playing Keeper. And then Elvish Mystic here. Minus one counter on Young Wolf, sacking Mystic. And our opponent has seen enough. Next we can. Put another minus one counter on the 2 2 Young Wolf, sacking the 1 1, rinse and repeat, drawing all the cards we want in the process while staying at a healthy life total. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands, okay. Uh, missing Yogmoth, of course, or a way to find Yogmoth. So that's the main concern. If we keep drawing lands and elves, this is not going to work out. But uh, yeah, on the draw, we've got an extra draw step. Hopefully, we'll find. Yogmoth or maybe an Eldritch Evolution. There's Yogmoth, perfect. Opponent with turn one Skrelv. Could be an Aura deck. If we can get Hapatra plus Yogmoth down, we can shrink their creatures down and generate an army of snakes. Maybe more of an artifact deck. Or a Kinon deck. So lots of legendaries to make mana with Kinon, yeah. That could be quite scary. For now, play Hapatra and another elf, and then next turn we can maybe decimate their board with Yogmoth. But our opponent can make quite a bit of mana with a Springleaf Drum. They could get a Paradox Engine down at some point and make a lot of mana and potentially combo kill us. Grizzly Salvage. So this may be a Kethys combo deck. Yeah, as we see Kethys on top of the opponent's deck. So, yeah, double Mox Ambers, quite scary. Not sure if they can combo right now. If they can, we could be dead. If not, untapping with Yogmoth should be quite effective. Okay. Can play a Young Wolf or can keep a Boseju. We'll see here. Okay, that worked. So step one kills Skrelv. Opponent's gonna protect Kinon in response and then take out Kinon as well. Sacrificing our elves. Alright, opponent let it go anyways. So now we get a snake. And then use a snake to kill Kinon. Our opponent will be able to play Kethys, but without anything else in play, it should be manageable. And Grizzly Salvage once again. That's fine. Fill the graveyard some more. Make a snake. And then now the question is... Do I attack with Elf? Do I play Young Wolf? Do I keep a Boseju? I think we'll keep a Boseju just to be on the safe side. Can put a minus one counter on Hapatra to make an extra snake. Alright, there's Kethys. 
So that happens. I could besiege the Springleaf Drum. I don't know if that's really all that helpful. I imagine our opponents got a land they can search up. So they can use Kethos' ability. But as soon as we get priority back, we'll try and take it out with our snakes. Got plenty of life to spare. Should have waited to get the extra snake first. Alright, Kath is down. Opponent does have access to their graveyard now, but uh, there's not a whole lot they can do with it. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Hyogmoth, pretty effective against these opposing creature combo decks. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against a Lurus deck, and my hand seems fine. Turn one Elf, turn two, probably a tap land and another Elf. Opponent's mulliganing aggressively, so it could be a Hammer combo deck, in which case Fatal Push will come in handy. And then Hapatra will be great too alongside Yogmoth. Turn one Scamp, yeah. And the green's probably for the belt equipment. Now I can play Innkeeper, can let the Scamp hit us, and then it can take out an Elf, that's I guess fine. And if they go for Hammer, I can Fatal Push in response at least. And there's a White Mana. Could see a Sigarda's Aid. They want to block, because then they just trade for both my creatures and they don't have to go for it. Which seems bad. They don't sack the Skimp, opponent passes, take our turn, and then could already play Yogmoth, which is a pretty good answer to the Skimp. Sure. Don't think I necessarily want to shrink it down right now. Even though I could maybe hit my land drop to play another elf, I think I'll just wait. And then do I attack with Innkeeper? Sure. And then I have two ways to potentially shrink down this camp. Cigar does aid. Okay. Don't think I respond. Opponent attacks. Block with Yogmoth and with two mana they can at most play two equipment and then We'll still be able to kill this camp. This kind of forces the issue. Belts. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'll kill an elf keep innkeeper, I think. And no damage is dealt since it has zero power. And now they've got a belt in play. Take our turn. And then we just want to Find double young wolf as soon as possible. Can get one now. Or we can uh, just play double elves, keep a fatal push, which is probably good enough, honestly. It's gonna be hard for the opponent to get past Yogmoth's ability. They're already down to ten. Alurus in hand. That's a slow way to do it. Okay, so can attack Diabolic Intent, get Hapatra, and then Hapatra plus Yogmoth is also a nightmare for a creature deck.
And if they answer Yawgmoth, we've got a backup. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Mystic into Innkeeper, plus Young Wolf, and then turn 3 Yawgmoth can already start drawing. Opponent on a Gigantha multicolor deck. And assemble the team, can find the missing piece. So yeah, hopefully Yogmoth can stick around. So opponent's got a full domain already on turn 2. Vanishing Verse, Exiles or Elf. Play Innkeeper. Did pick up another Young Wolf, so with two of those and Yogmoth we can draw all the cards we want. But I think I'll hang on to my treasure. And then now we can double Young Wolf or assemble, play one Young Wolf. Put might have a Leyline Binding as an answer to Yogmoth. Could also assemble for land. I think I just double Young Wolf here, since I'm not sure what to get with assemble, whether it's a land, a second Yogmoth, or maybe our eventual Blood Artist. Alright, pass it back. Opponent just takes their turn, so they're hanging on to their removal. And a Cavo is next. Just a Watery Grave left. Okay, so play Yogmoth, and then we should be good to go. Even have an Innkeeper to gain life back, so we can draw all the cards we want here. Wouldn't be able to win the game this turn, but uh, we'll still be in a great spot. There's another young wolf which we could play. Could play an elf. So, pretty happy with the cards in hand. So, could just play... Elvish Mystic and pass, and then next turn Eldritch Evolution gets Blood Artists, and we keep things going. And we'll discard a couple lands to hand size. Vanishing Verse and Yawgmoth was to be expected. Let's draw a few more in response. At least we're not discarding to hand size right now. We have a backup Yawgmoth already. Yeah, this is probably good enough. Cavo attacks. It's gonna discard and draw. And another Kavu opponent is tapped out. Okay, so can play Yogmoth, and then I just need to find my Blood Artists within the next 18 draw steps pretty much, and then we can win the game. So yeah, let's go for it. Finding Hapatra would also be quite effective. Mm, 
another innkeeper. Can technically gain infinite life since we're limited by our library size. If I find a Hapatra and I have like 20-ish cards remaining, then I might just play Hapatra instead of waiting for Blood Artist. So we'll just keep going. There's Hapatra. 28 cards remaining. I'll give it a few more. Yeah, with one more mana, Eldritch Evolution would have been the easy way out here. But, uh, have to do it the hard way. Twenty six left. Another Hapatra. cards remaining. Opponent is at 17, so we don't need 20 cards left. Alright, I think I'm going for Hapatra now. And hope my next draw step isn't Blood Artist. So now we can just nuke the opponent's creatures. Does not seem like we were going to find the artist in time. And our opponent has seen enough. We can sculpt our perfect hand to be able to combo off even after a sweeper onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's pretty slow. Uh, if Fatal Push is good in the matchup, I can cast a turn one, but then we won't be able to play our two drop necessarily. So we're looking at maybe turn to Innkeeper and then start assembling, but we need to assemble a lot of things. Don't think this is good enough. Alright, this I can work with. Probably okay to ditch one land. And then Elves into Innkeeper can sack either one of them to the Evolution. And a turn one Gilded Goose. Could push it. I think I keep push for something else and just play elves. And then next turn we could innkeeper and fatal push. Put onto junt deck. And a priest, so that will gladly take out. A patra also an option, but don't want the priest to go unchecked. Although if Mayhem Devil shows up, we could also be in trouble. Since, of course, we're sacrificing a lot of creatures ourselves. Thoughtseize can take evolution, leaving me with double Hapatra. And then we'll still need to find a way to get Yoggmoth in play. Opponent actually took Hapatra. That's interesting. Could evolution now get Yoggmoth in play? Or I can play Hapatra and then go for it next turn, which may be better. And then I'll keep a Fatal Push, don't think I need to get one damage in.
Okay, Crucius. So I can sack my treasure here to take out Crucius before they get a chance to trigger it. I think that's fine. Yeah, let's just not mess with the extra treasure. And then now evolution, sacking Innkeeper to get the Ogmoth. Can attack with Hapatra. And then minus one counter on the goose, make a snake. Sack snake, finish off goose. Make another snake. And draw a few more cards. Okay, pass it back. Could have potentially kept drawing until we found a land. But now we have a bit more pressure in play. Another Crucius. Okay, so can just take that out before the opponent gets a chance to trigger it. And the air opponent concedes, we can keep mowing down their creatures one by one and eventually we'll find our win conditions. Alright, so we got to see our Undying combo deck in action, and I was quite impressed with how the deck performed. The Ogmoth alongside Young Wolf providing a ton of value. Even if you don't kill the opponent on the spot, you can usually find a full grip to then combo off on the following turn. So the main weakness is probably going to be opposing combo decks that can win around turn 4, since while we can combo off on turn 4, we're not necessarily winning on that same turn. So opposing combo decks that can actually kill us on the spot, like maybe a Charbelcher or a Mizzix Mastery Graveyard deck, can potentially win on turn 4 and actually close out the game. So those are usually going to be faster than what we're capable of. But against other creature decks, at least we have some chum blockers and some interaction to stay alive longer. Against Hand Disruption, we have a lot of redundancy and card draw with the Ogmoth as well. So that's the advantage of this creature-centric combo deck as opposed to your more all-in builds. And of course, once you take this to best of three, you can tutor up all sorts of one-off creatures, like maybe a scavenging ooze for graveyard hate, and then now you've got better game against those graveyard combo decks in the format as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.